I guess we start with Sheen because the valuation being discussed is mega. Um, it is to all intents and purposes a kind of discount clothing retailer um, side by side. What do you make about it coming to market? Yeah. This is one that we've heard is rumored to IPO for a while now, um, and it looks like it's finally making that move into the public markets. And it's an interesting one to watch. It's different than the cohort of companies that we saw went public this fall. Uh, and it's a company that's been growing really rapidly. They achieved $23 billion in revenue last year, had their most profitable half the first half of this year. On top of that, they've grown their distribution centers in the U.S. can. Europe. They've opened more manufacturing centers in India and Brazil. Um, and they're really solidifying their U.S. footprint. Um, the U.S. is their largest market, um, you know, forging partnerships with Forever 21 and others to, you know, create that brick and mortar presence. That being said, there is a lot of hair around this one. Uh, there's concerns about their labor practices, uh, their ties to China, um, you know, and other issues. So, it's interesting, uh, and it will be interesting to see how investors think about this one. Um, there really hasn't been an apples to apples comparison recently. And distinguish for us the driving force behind a Sheen wanting to go public and, for example, a Reddit. It feels as though from a Reddit perspective, this is a liquidity event that really drives the desire to go public. I think that's right. Reddit was founded in 2005. This is an 18-year-old company. You'll get Sheen. They're 11 years old, so you know they're not young either. And when you look at a global level, there are over 1,200 of these unicorn companies uh, valued at over $3.8 trillion in aggregate. So that's a lot of value that has been tied up in the private markets. And while platforms like EquityZen enable some investors to access this market and some shareholders to achieve liquidity, there really isn't a wide-scale liquidity event until there is an IPO. So I think a lot of these companies are feeling intense pressure from their early investors, from their early employees to get some liquidity. And uh, you know, venture capitalists really aren't looking to pump more money into these late-stage companies. So the IPO is really um, you know, the expected next step. The reported target valuation for Reddit is $15 billion. The last active user number that I reported, which was like months ago, is between 50 and 60 million daily active users, which in the grand scheme of things doesn't seem like that many. Um, you talked about the motivation being employee liquidity, but what on the about the demand side of the equation? Is anyone actually interested in a publicly traded Reddit? Reddit's an interesting one to watch because they are so entwined in the whole retail investor market. They really were in the news a lot at the time of the meme stock uh, era. Their subreddit, Wall Street Bets, really drove a lot of that retail momentum. Um, so there's certainly a tie there. And I think there are some super fan and users who will be eagerly watching and um, looking to participate in this IPO. Um, so while they are maybe one of the smaller social platforms, really do have a loyal user base. And another thing to note is that they are growing from a profitability perspective. Um, it's reported that their advertising revenue grew 31% in 2022. This has historically been a really small part of their business. Um, so an opportunity for them um, to grow and uh, potentially achieve profitability. Um, mm. it, it'll be interesting to see if they are profitable at the time of considering an IPO, because that seems to be a table stake for any company considering now. It's interesting that in many ways, an IPO is often a marketing event as well, getting your name out there to a retail community. And one particular interview we had last week amid the whole furor and debacle around the ousting then return of Sam Altman to OpenAI was one very key VC saying, well, this wouldn't eventually be a bad time to actually IPO OpenAI. Just take a listen for us, Brian. Yeah, I actually think that they should, once they get this all sorted out, immediately file to go public. I think that the demand and the outpouring and interest that you've seen and the support for Sam is just absolutely unprecedented in a tech company. It's almost like an unintended pre-IPO roadshow to show the overwhelming demand. Of Lux Capital, that was Josh Wolf. Brianne, you of course make a market in OpenAI. What would you say to the level of demand there is for a company like that amid the turmoil? 
When we look at demand amongst our investors in the private markets, AI and machine learning companies are by far the most in-demand companies um, on EquitySense platform. So not surprising given just the boom in this space, uh, but there was certainly a lot of investor interest for AI and AI adjacent companies. So an interesting take on that one. Um, and I'm interested to see kind of if, if that story develops and what comes from that, uh, because there certainly is a lot of demand. And when you look at the AI market more broadly, a lot of these companies are still quite young, so less likely to be IPO candidates. Um, but that doesn't mean that there couldn't be one that hits the market. And OpenAI certainly has the brand name. Brianne, just 30 seconds. Do you expect an active 1Q 2024, another uh, window to happen? I do. I do think things will pick up in Q1 of next year. From a macroeconomic perspective, we have really good indicators of job growth, strong GDP, uh, inflation is cooling. So from, you know, when you look at that, now is an opportune time to enter the market. The IPOs we've seen haven't done great, um, but I don't think that should be a deterrent for more of these companies next year, uh, especially those who really have both the liquidity and the investor access need to enter the markets.